Hey everybody, I would like to welcome you to another episode of Pop Culture Gems. This is a series where we talk to amazing creators, artists, cosplayers, voice actors, and so much more. If you like the interviews we do with these terrific guests, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel, the CFG channel. We also release Pop Culture Gems on all podcast services out there, or go to our main website, confreaksandgeeks.com to not miss an episode today. I am speaking with a voice actor who has been in a ton of cool recent anime series. He has provided his voice in video games as well. He has play, he played characters like Nami's personal cloud, Zeus in One Piece, the indecisive playboy Naoi Mukai in Girlfriend Girlfriend, the good friend Raymond Fow Arkin in Trapped in a Dating Sim, and the ridiculous overpowered Rain Shroud in Beast Tamers. I would like to welcome uh, Kevin Dalwell to the show. How are you doing, sir? Hey, I'm doing good. It's pretty nice. How about you? <laughs> I am doing good. I'm I'm hanging in there, man. Like, uh, but uh, uh, I'm just glad. I'm just glad I'm able to come back and just. Uh, uh, well, it's been a little bit. It's been a little bit of a week or so. So haven't come back to do this podcast, but I love talking to folks like you uh, and, and stuff. I love what y'all do. So it's always great to see new 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 folks. It's always great to see new people like uh like you and your incredible voice acting career. So. Hi. <laughs> so anyways let's get this party started uh i just want to know like uh, i always ask this for a lot of people but uh what is your story uh what made you want to become a voice actor uh that's a good question i mean i was just kind of figure out like you know what to do with my life when i was in college i did a lot of music and band play a lot of instruments and i realized that like the whole professional industry of music wasn't really for me. I liked having fun with it, but I didn't want to do it for a job, really. So I had to decide, you know, what to do other ways. And I kind of didn't want to do stage acting because, I don't know, I just sometimes don't like to be perceived. Uh, so uh, that's something I was like, you know, that's not for me. Even though, like, uh, sometimes people will be like, hey, you know, maybe you should look into acting. I'm like, no, not really. And uh, I had fun, like, making little videos on YouTube for a while, doing little funny voices with that, too. And there was one uh, YouTuber that I watched a lot who made, like, uh, a book. And that book kind of got scouted to make an animation for it. And they're like, hey, if my book is going to get animated, I kind of want to hold, like, a little personal competition to my viewers and see if we can, like, uh, you know, get my viewers to voice in it, too. And I ended up like auditioning for that. And they ended up hiring like actual professional voice actors who have been in a lot of stuff uh, on that project. Like I think it was like Carrot Buck Bucklin and Alejandro Saab and people who were in that project. Sadly, the project died. But I got cast in that project too. And I'm like, oh, wow, wait, this is the first thing I've ever auditioned for. And I actually got booked into something really cool. Uh, maybe I should look into this. So after that, I started doing, you know, classes, started reaching out to people and kind of, you know, just did everything I can uh, to kind of feel it out. And once I decided, hey, this is something I really do want to pursue seriously, then I went full force, moved uh, to Texas, and now I'm doing it out here. Wow, that's really cool. So wait, so a couple questions. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, where did you where did you initially move from? Oh, I moved from Miami. Oh my Florida. god, <laughs> that yeah. is a pretty big change. Okay, cool. And uh, <laughs> you said that you were so you were originally a music major itself, and then when you switched, so you switched from music, uh, like you realized you didn't want to do that as like you know a full on career. But uh, when you were on your own making videos and stuff, you were more interested into that, and that's what kind of got your interest in voice acting. Yeah, I was just having a lot of uh, fun just like uh, making creative content, like improving on stuff and just making things as I go. And using my voice is something I always found like super easy to, to use. Like I've always done like nine to five for like call centers and things like that. And you know, always get mm. the whole thing where people say, oh, you have a nice voice. You should do acting or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, cool. Everyone says that to everybody. It doesn't really matter. But, uh, you know, after like I did that competition and, and booked in the thing, I'm like, okay this is maybe something that I should try more seriously to like pursue. And I took classes, I took online classes, took uh, workshops and a uh, weird thing about like uh, my uh, background is that like my mother was, well, it is still, but like works at an airline. So when I was younger, I could actually like fly for free. Uh, going around the country, basically I would hitch a ride on planes if they had a free seat and just jump on that. 
So anytime I saw there was like any specific workshops or competitions that was going around around the country for voice acting, I would just hop on there. There was like one time where um, I wanted to do a workshop that was in Texas while I was living in Florida. And I had like my day job at the time still happening. So what I did was I would work like in the morning for my day job, go from work directly to the airport once a week, fly to Texas, do the workshop, fly back the next morning and go back to work and then once a week i would do that workshop for like a month flying back and forth so people at the workshop be like oh yeah i drove an hour here from this place oh i drove four hours from houston i'm like oh i flew from miami this morning they're like what (laughs) what is wrong with you oh it gets it gets worse i like i didn't really use her flying out that much but when it came to acting i abused it when i can like there'll be times where my i had a friend message me and it's like kevin oh they're having this voice acting competition in uh chicago and if you win they'll fly you to la and you get to be in their show and i'm just like oh when is that they're like um it's tomorrow and i'm like oh cool i'll be there and they're like what yeah i'll be there and i'll be like hey uh dad yeah um we're flying to chicago in the morning i'm not gonna be home this weekend he's like you what and i'm like <laughs> you message my boss i'm like hey i gotta call out this weekend i gotta i got a thing i gotta go <laughs> Hey, you know what? You you worked with the resources that you had at the time, so there is no shame in that. That is, but that's unbelievable. So you were the, what's what's scary to me is that you even went to work. Like the, do you know how draining it is to go to the airport? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! You're like, oh no, I got to do my my got to take care of that, and then go yeah. go four states away to for this competition. Wow. I was trying to save up for a move, so I'm like, anything I can do to still try to make as much money as I can while still pursuing my dream, like, I don't want to throw one away for, for the other, you know? I, I still still got to do what you got to do. Like, heck, even to this day, like, I still work a 9-to-5 just to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, just okay financially and, like, have, like, any benefits I want. Like, I'm only part-time right now, but mm-hmm. uh, as things are going right now, I'm probably going to leave that job in the next couple months anyway, but... I have like one that makes sure like if I can keep the little balance between like my passion and being sensible as an adult at the same time. And once things get low, just, you know, just enough out of balance that I know, okay, I'm doing well enough with one side where I can drop the other, but I'm holding off until it's like, you know, just too much to handle. Then I stop, which probably isn't the smartest thing to do, but like I'm crazy. I'm workaholic or whatever. <laughs> wow. And do you still, well, do you still do, do you still do it? Probably not as much, but do you still do like that kind of grind? Uh, like oh, to yeah. fly it? Oh, you still do? Oh, no, 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 not, not, not to fly. No, yeah, yeah. I definitely don't do the, the flying grind anymore. I do other grinds, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you got to respect the hustle. I'll definitely, and I definitely respect that. So, and, uh, do you uh, have a personal preference when you do a project or uh, if you like had to choose a project between voice acting, a character in an anime or gaming? Um, is there a character you like or something that you would naturally uh, the kind of uh, uh, job? Is there something that you like to naturally lean towards? Um, I'd say like if I got to work on like a video game like an action rpg or something i think that would really be fun to do the efforts but like with anime you can also get that so i feel like i probably gravitate with uh video games at first just because i haven't done as much video games as i've done anime so that's just something up top of my head but really i enjoy them both the most i guess with video game a lot of times you have more freedom which you don't have to always match flaps exactly so you can get away with a lot more whereas anime it's like it's got to be exactly in this certain pattern if not it's going to look wonky <laughs> you know right so you kind of would would prefer the freedom of uh of gaming cuz they're going to be catering around you than they than you catering around uh a, a series that was not initially catered around you essentially yeah yeah okay. if you're doing original games unless you're dubbing games and you might need to do a little bit but it's usually not as strict as like dubbing anime yeah, but man, sometimes uh, sometimes game the gaming grind looks insane though. Like <laughs> from yeah. what I would I could describe, but the action RPG I could easily see that that would be pretty cool to do. So and uh, and I mean and you've been in like a lot of different kinds of roles and uh, the in most in some of those roles you weren't like the main role, but like just credited as an additional voice or additional voices. Uh, I've never asked this, uh, but what does additional voices entail? Because, I mean, that sounds so vague, <laughs> essentially. 
Well, that refers to two things. It could be referring to, you know, bits, where it's just characters who are appeared who don't have names, who might just be there for one episode or maybe a couple episodes, or just say a few things and just, you know, leave, die, or whatever they do. So just not important characters, essentially. Or it could just mean you're doing Walla, which is, you know, you and a or a group of people are just making the background voices, you know, like the soldiers charging or the people screaming when the monsters attacking the village, stuff like mm-hmm. that, or just kids in the back of the classroom talking in a school and stuff like that you know just random voices to fill the to fill the atmosphere of the show oh okay so basically you're just like the the banter in the background or the, or you may have one line or two lines or something in the background and then you're just like oh okay you don't have a name of the character but that's it yeah exactly okay. anything that isn't a named character but that still has a voice is mm-hmm. additional voices okay cool cool yeah oh uh, okay that's actually it's actually kind of funny because uh i don't know i'm i'm old i'm old school so so <laughs> do have you I, i'm sure you've watched dragon ball z before uh yeah. but have you ever heard of the ocean dub dragon ball z right okay right. Have, have you ever seen it yeah oh, okay so like uh for some reason every time i'm thinking of additional voices it, it's the additional voices that they added where they w- decided to go off sh- off script like completely off script because they didn't want to show death in, in in that game during that or during that time so they made the dumbest like voiceover dubs i have ever seen in any animes uh, 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 of it like like when napa destroys the city like there was a person off screen that says oh thank god it was a sunday so no one was there in the building and i'm like what is going on <laughs> have you ever noticed have you ever noticed that like at all like th- there is so many one liners in that, that, that it just looks like that it's a gem to me <laughs> for for additional voices old uh, anime has a lot of nice one liners like digimon has a heck ton of them in first like four seasons i think or no five seasons <laughs> oh really like like see i've never see and uh, excuse me, I, I like Digimon the games. Like Cyber Sleuth was one of my favorite. Was was way better than uh, than Pokemon to me. But like, mm-hmm. uh, oh, you agree? <laughs> no, I agree. Awesome. I fully agree. <laughs> oh God, yeah, it was so much better. Uh, but uh, uh, but like, what? I never watched the series. I never watched. Yeah, I never watched the Digimon, the original D- Digimon series before. I wanted to, but I just never. I, I I was like old enough to not able or wasn't able to see it when it was coming out. So like like what like what kind of additional voices do they do mostly? Oh, it's not even always the additional voices, but it's just the characters. Like anytime there is not somebody's mouth moving on screen, they will try to throw in as many jokes as they can, and it's absolutely hilarious. It's like in really one breath? Good. Yeah, like in one breath, they'll just throw in jokes. Like if there's nobody on screen, but they can make a sound, like sometimes they'll just do it, or they'll be like bits who will be like, there's a giant, you know, squid Digimon, you know, attacking the town, and, <laughs> and he's looking like. You know, I really hate the fact that I moved to Japan here. I should go back to California. So there's going to be like stupid lines or in the, I'm sure you've heard it in the Digimon movie where there is a, a car about to hit like the giant Agumon. It jumps out of the way. And then one guy goes, yo, bro, did you see that? He's like, no, I was sleeping. He's like, but you're driving. Like, <laughs> <laughs> And that's all off screen. Like the characters aren't, you know, I don't think they even had audio in the Japanese, but they're like, hey, they're, you can't see people's mouths moving so we can throw a joke here. <laughs> What four kids entertainment was insane. <laughs> so, like, that just what oh my god. It's, like, you... <laughs> it's so good. Obviously I, we can't really do dubs like that nowadays, but we can try to get a little close. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, well, I mean the nineties was a different kind of time with uh with anime. So like it was just it was it was the Wild West. They thought that anyone could do dubs and uh that was quite wrong. And uh, but for the most part, so like when they were trying to get away with some of this stuff, but Digimon, oh my god, I, I remember what was it called? Was it Ultimate Muscle? Do you remember a series like that about like wrestling? I've like, heard it was, of it, haven't seen yeah. it though. Yeah, that was. I only, I, I'm pretty sure they made their own script. Like it didn't seem like it met, it matched at all what the original one was. But the when they, when they decided to say, hey, you know, we know better than the original script. That's just like comic gold, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> so, so no, I need to I need to go check back on some old school Digimon if that's the case. Because uh, oh, it yeah. is fire, 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 and they had they just released like uh Blu-ray versions of the first two seasons. I think they're one of the two seasons, but I know I picked that up because I, I love that series so much. Do you prefer Do you prefer Digimon over Pokemon, or like I mean in general, or do you just like the world comparatively uh, to Pokemon? I like them both almost equually i like i I, i'll say definitely equal in terms of the games like 
I've, I've like grew up on the Pokemon games more and Pokemon games have given me more joy over time. But like mm. you said, like Cyber Suit is just a better video game than most Pokemon games that I've played in general, but I still have the nostalgia factor. So I like them both basically equally, but I do find Digimon can, can be easier to kind of stick with, with the games and the shows because they tend to lead more like, they treat you more like, a, I don't know, an adult with, with both of those. <laughs> I think it was more, yeah, it was def, uh, the feel of it was definitely more adult. Um, I just don't like the, I like, I like innovation. I like change. And I feel like Pokemon has always been stuck. Uh, even though, don't get me wrong. I mean, I played, uh, I bought Scarlet and Violet, the most recent one, and I had my fun time with it. But my big, but my issue is like, dude, this formula is from 1997. It's still the same thing. And, uh, and on top of that, they did a horrible job with QA testing with like, you know, glitches and stuff like that inside the game. And uh, I was just like, Okay, when's the uh? Let me try Digimon Survive. <laughs> and uh, uh, and I, I liked it. It was it, there's a lot of text, but it was fun. But it was just, but it was uh, yeah. It, it is a book, <laughs> but, it, but it still doesn't beat Cyber Sleuth. Oh yeah, Cyber Sleuth is goaded. The best Digimon and Pokemon game at the same time. Yes, exactly. It's I never. Did you ever play the sequel? I never played the sequel before. Hacker's Memory. Yeah. Oh, Hacker's Memory is also. Fan freaking tastic! Yes, really? you should definitely pay it. Yes, it play it, play it, play it. It is just as good as the base game. It, it's just if you liked the base game, you're just getting more of it, and it's good, and it's got a whole new story of characters that are just as endearing as the first game. So super oh duper God. recommend. It continues the story really. Okay, I'm definitely well. You already sold me on that because I already was the yeah. first one on. I just never never got a chance. So that's cool. And uh uh. Oh, sorry, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of <laughs> back all, all off. But uh, was there like something that you wish you knew before getting in voiceover that would have made it easier or or better initially when you got in? Um, I think a little bit more patience is something that I probably wanted more when it comes. To, I definitely jumped the gun when it comes to some of this making like demos when I was first starting out. Definitely did things that I probably shouldn't have too early in my career starting off uh but that's kind of mainly what i wanted it with patience is the biggest thing that i find that i was lacking when i was starting off there it didn't really hurt me all that much but you know hindsight's like yeah i probably shouldn't have done that it didn't really do me much of a you know favor what do you mean like uh demos like did you do demos too fast or was it like yeah it just wasn't okay i i did demos too fast or it was like you know commercial demos or like oh this place is oh we'll train you for like a month or two blah 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 make a commercial demo so you'll be ready in commercial and i'm like cool i'll do that and i did it and then i'm like this commercial demo isn't that great no <laughs> <laughs> i outgrew it in like a, a week or so and then it wasn't great so was it a class that you did that was like commercial demos and then and then you thought and then they were kind of pushing it like saying like oh you could do that really fast and uh because you know because like it's weird because yeah. like i'm kind of i'm semi doing that grind right now in a way uh but i don't tr i am not trusting uh, the trusty guy <laughs> when it comes to that kind of thing but like uh so so like were they saying do this, 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 and this, and uh, go do your demo and release it to all everybody out there without even, you know, truly, you know, teaching you the way of how things are supposed to be done. It was more like a sp program where, like, hey, do you want a demo? Well, what we'll do for you is, like, you know, coach you for, like, a month or two and, like, hit Taylor, make a demo for you, blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't take into effect, whereas uh, if you're not ready for the demo after two months, they don't stop you and be like, hey, you need more training, you take more time. They'll just make the demo anyway, because that's a part of their package. There's mm. no personal gain. Like, there are some coaches who will make a demo for you. They'll be like, hey, let's take a class or two and work together first. And they'll be like, hey, uh, now that I've worked with you, I think you're not ready for this demo yet. And you should take more classes, take more time before making it. Or they'll be like, yeah, you're ready. We can do this. You know, actual, like, you know, personalization to your experience with them. Yeah, but it's, yeah, I would say that's really truly your fault. But it's more like about yeah, it, it was, yeah. It was me just being like, you know, overly hype and naive a little bit. And, you know, it wasn't the biggest, the, the biggest detriment, but it's something I look back. I'm like, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that, but no, whatever. No. It's in the past. Yeah, it's all good. I mean, I know you're not holding it against them or anything. So that's, yeah. that, 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 that's good. But no, that, that's cool. Less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, but it's hard. It's hard to find that. Like, it's hard to find like, you know, mentor or tutor or anything uh, when it comes to that, because now everyone i mean maybe i don't know i don't know how old you are but how long ago it was back in the day comparatively to what it is now there's just it's oversaturated with these kind of things you know or different kinds of options so 
I can easily yeah. understand. Friend recommendation is generally where I get most of my coaches from. Like, oh, did somebody say this guy's really good? All right, let's try them out. Oh, dang, they are really good. I'll recommend them to somebody else, you know? <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, that's exactly probably the word of mouth is probably the best way. I totally agree. It really is. Yeah. yeah. And and um, also, and like what's really cool I like seeing recently in the voice acting game is that I see more diversity in voice acting now more than ever before. Uh, I just want to know, like, how is your personal experience between uh, being a person of color in the professional voice acting game? Uh, oh, I think we're doing way better than we were before. I know when I was, you know, f first getting started out and like getting uh, recognized by studios at first, uh, when this is all happening, like what, in 2020, 2019 ish, uh, when I was first getting in into that space. Uh, I would only get auditions sometimes for characters who were black on there. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, okay. I mean, it's cool that I get to get, get these auditions. I really like these shows and games that I'm getting auditions for. However, uh, one, I'd like to get more auditions. Two, big thing, big uh, you know, elephant in the room here is uh, the guys you're sending me auditions for do not match my vocal type. I do not sound like people expect a black dude who's 26 to sound like, honestly. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, totally like, agree. yeah, like, uh, for example, like, I was working uh for like what to a year or two with this director or engineer off and on for years and i met them recently like in person for the first time last year and i remember they were talking to uh to one of my uh roommates and the engineer stops the uh s stops the session for a second he's like hey hey hold on hold on bro did did you know that kevin's a brother and <laughs> they're, they're, they're like what, what, what you mean I, I just looked up his linkedin like i see his profile picture He's black. They're like, what? <laughs> and they're like, they needed to work with me for like over a year and didn't know I was black the whole time. Did y'all not, not use webcams like at all? Or we didn't need them. We're just here for the voice. Yo, <laughs> we that's never funny. Them on. That is funny. Oh yeah. man. So, I mean, uh, yeah, I definitely, I mean, I've heard horror stories of like, uh, cause I've talked to a lot of different people and stuff. I'm not going to name them out, but like the, uh, about, uh, about it. But, and then I heard like, like it's cool now comparatively, but I remember like how typecasted uh, when they're like, "Oh, they see a black dude, uh, they see a black dude, or they see a black girl," and they're like, "Okay, here you go." It's like, "No, nah, you can't be the main. You got. It's like you got to be. Uh, it's like, can you be more? You know, they they they, yeah. they skirt around the word urban, but like they don't say the word urban, and I was just like. I wonder to myself, how can you decide to wanting to be in something in, in like in this kind of industry if they don't respect like you, if they're not looking at you or looking at your voice uh, as the character? I mean, it's just I mean, th that must have been f like semi frustrating initially. I mean, am I wrong? Yeah. And it's because, like I said, I was getting the audition for stuff like that when that just doesn't fit my vocal type. Anyway, they just assume, oh. He's uh, listed as a black guy on our list. He must be able to have this exact sound because that we assume all black people sound like. And I'm like, no, dude, I just sound like a regular dude, man. That's <laughs> I don't think the stereotype that you are. It's and it's something that I had to like really kind of get a, over a mental hurdle because it was really like annoying me a lot. And, like and bring this back to coaches. I, I took uh, some coaching sessions with uh, Dave Fanoy, who's, you know, phenomenal actor. And I asked him about that. And I'm like, you know, like. How do you deal with that? That's something that's really bothering me. And he like sat me down and like gave me a story about like how just being, you know, a black actor is being you. You were black. You don't have to prove to anybody that you were black. You just do what you do. And I really like sat down, thought about it for a while. I'm like, yeah, it's right. I'm not going to worry about like if I'm sounding, you know, black enough for these auditions. I'm just going to play me and let it happen because I am, you know, I am black. There's nothing else that can prove I am black. You can see it. it's my experience, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, you know, what it is. And I just stopped really worrying about it at that point. And I everything just got way better after that. I will say it's a mentality thing at that point. You can't really let them, you know, get to me. Yeah, that's a, well, that's definitely good. I mean, I'm well, definitely good. Definitely good, uh, good, good. Really great mentality, too. But that's cool, though. I've always like I've always wanted to every time I get a chance, I always want to see like to know these kind of stories. I mean, because it's just like it's cool. It's, it's cool. It, it makes me so excited and glad. I mean that you're in, you're doing you're doing the work, you know, man. And it's always it's freaking awesome because di diversity really does like you know does matter, uh, in my uh, in my opinion, especially what you do, especially like I didn't even know. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, like I didn't even know because I saw like uh uh when I was wa I watched Beast Tamer and I was like, oh, 
Kevin D. Thelwell. And I was like, I looked at it and I was like, oh, because I mean, you, you do have a very good pitched voice. And I did not think that I was the first thing in my mind. I did not think that you were black initially. Either. <laughs> so I know you probably get that a lot, but at the same time, but it's cool. But then once I was like, oh, that's awesome. That's so freaking awesome. Because you, you, you did a great job in that, uh, just in that alone. So. I mean, uh, with it too. So just to let you know. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was really, really fun. Oh yeah, like it's funny because like when I watch, I'm not a big fan of you of like of harems kind of a uh, series because it's usually all the same thing, you know, it's like will they, will won't they kind of stuff. But like his, like with a uh, uh, with Rain Man, like it kind of infuriated me. Like it's like <laughs> this dude is getting like op already like his, his, like whatever he did was already op as it is but like but now you're giving him additional op inch to like because he's doing these contracts that he that they're like oh beast tamers can't do that beast tamers can't do that it's just like what the hell is it's like what's this doing on it's like it's yeah. superman <laughs> I always love the little running gag they have. Like, what? Everyone at my village can do this. Well, this is normal, right? And I'm like, no, it's not. You're insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like every day. It's like uh, uh, I was like, well, first off, your village is gone, so you're the only person. <laughs> yeah. There. yeah. It's like, oh, what do you mean? And then there's always a sub craft cra uh, craft of it. It's like, oh no, there was a like insect taming, and I'm like. <laughs> There's insect taming now. It's like, man, this dude is going to rule the world <laughs> eventually. <laughs> how this is going to happen? But that's great. Yep. And uh, is uh, like, is there a role out there that you're like that you want to play, or is, or is there a role that you would think that you were you would be the perfect fit for? Uh, for. Uh, I mean, I would totally, totally, totally one day want to like voice in like a really cool game like Fire Emblem. That's like a goal on my bucket list. Uh, I would want to be, I definitely want to voice something Digimon related, either a game or an anime wise. I know like I am watching like Digimon Ghost Game right now and I love that show so much. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, uh, uh, Kiroshiro is like my favorite character in that show. And I'm just like, oh, dang, he's in my vocal range. If only I can get auditions for that. Oh, boy. Well, he, whoever knows if that show will even get dubbed. We'll, we'll see like 50 episodes in at this point. Wow, they're fifty episodes. In. Oh yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Um, that, that's that's kind of normal for Digimon, right? Like they they yeah, do more, did, multiple seasons. Yeah, Digimon's are, each season runs around fifty-ish episodes or so. So I'm like, hey, if I can like uh, find out a way to audition for that show, I would <laughs> kill to be that character. Oh, but you know, I can't control it. It, it is what it is. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, one day I I just have a feeling you'll you'll eventually get there. I know you'll definitely get there though. So. uh <laughs> And that, uh, like, I mean, you seem like you just naturally gravitate to, like, you said, action RPGs. Are you? Do you like, like, are you an are you an RPG fan, or like, what kind of RPGs do you usually like to play? Yeah, I, I generally like RPGs. Like, I love the heck out of like, JRPGs too. Like, I've played like all the Xenoblade games, and I love them so much. I am trying I, to play the first one right now, and it is uh, just, it is beefy, man. That <laughs> is a beefy game. It is, yeah, it's like, what, 60 hours if you just do mainly story content, which is what I did. Um, mm. I like that game. I love the characters. Xenoblade 2, even better than Xenoblade 1, in my opinion, just because the characters are more fun and it's more goofy, more anime-y, kind mm. of, where Shulk mm -hmm. is more serious. Then Xenoblade 3 takes all the fun parts of Xenoblade 2, but makes them more mature like Xenoblade 1 was and puts them together, and it's so great. Golly, uh, really? Objectively the best game. Not my favorite, but objectively on paper, I have to say it's the best game out of the three. <laughs> the third one? Yeah, the third one. Oh my god. Uh, it's going to be a long time for me to get to there, but... <laughs> yeah. Like, have you played the uh, the expansion on 2? Uh, like, the, basically, that's a game in itself. The, uh, oh, yeah, the... Torna, the Golden Country? Yeah. The two? Yeah, yeah, I played that the OST on that one is so great, and it's also really, really good. It's really dark story, yeah, because the prequel to two, and it doesn't, you know, spoiler, it doesn't have a happy ending because it's just how things are. Oh so my god! It's really great. I'm, okay, I'm looking forward to it. But see, like right now, I'm actually going through. Uh, I'm going through a Trails of Cold Steel series. Uh, and and uh, I'm on like the third one right now, and then like I still have two more to go, and I'm just like. <laughs> I'm like okay. After this, I'm gonna do Xenoblade. I've been holding this off for three years. <laughs> I'm like, I'll go towards it. And oh, stuff. I have a backlog too, man. Man, this is massive. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just did a Final Fantasy 12 run on stream uh, on, on our Twitch stream, and I was just like, uh, well, because uh, if people don't know me, I hate Final Fantasy 12 and up. <laughs> but <laughs> but, uh, but uh, when I finally did it, it was really like I was like, okay, cool. But I I need another RPG, and I don't want to do Final Fantasy, so. 
So that uh, that's cool. And um, and I know you said and then you said earlier also that you were also a Pokemon fan. Um, what kind of like do you have a favorite like go to Pokemon, like a ride or die that you oh, have to yes. have? Yes, my ride or die is Empoleon. Empoleon is the goat. I love it so much. <laughs> Easily favorite. <laughs> which one's the Pole? Like, which version of Eevee is that? Is that the uh, black and that's not the, that's not Umbr is that Umbreon? Uh, no, no, no. no. Empoleon is not an Eevee Lucian. Empoleon no. is the water starter final form for Sinnoh, Gen Four. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Big penguin. <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to take a look at this. I, yeah, I, am, <laughs> I am terrible with Pokemon because, <laughs> like, uh, I skipped uh, this. My my history was Pokemon Gen One, Gen Eight, and Nine. <laughs> oh wow! You skipped... So Gen Five, in my opinion, is objectively the best generation. Like, period. So the mm -hmm. fact that you skipped that one is really sad. You should definitely like peek on that one. Gen Five is amazing. Even really, Gen Four is my favorite, but Gen Five objectively, I feel, is the best Pokemon game. Which one is Gen Five? Gen 5 is Black and White and Black and White 2. Oh, both of them are good? Yeah, because Black and White's a direct sequel, so the story continues. And they it's like a soft reboot to Pokemon because they, they don't have any of the original Pokemon in the when you're playing through the game base. And mm -hmm. you don't get old Pokemon until you beat the game. And it has brand new 151 Pokemon, new gyms, new everything. It feels like a whole new experience, yet still being core Pokemon. And the wow. story is just great. Wow, it's really okay. nice. That is really cool. I didn't even... Like... I, like yeah. uh, I, I never had handhelds, uh, like beside like uh, except the first one, uh, first one that kind of came out of nowhere. But like the uh, uh, most of the other ones has been on Switch. That's my exposure. So everything is usually new to me on that. Ah, so. I gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, I'd say Black and White's objectively the best, and it has one of the best stories. And then Sun and Moon, Base Sun and Moon, not Ultra Sun and Moon, because then we talk about Ultra, but Base Sun and Moon. Uh, has one of the most compelling character arc stories in Pokemon. Period, because it really tackles a lot of uh growth with your rival characters and just like handles like uh parental mental health and abuse in the family and it's really cool it's really nice oh wow that's great yeah, it's it, like uh, art. oh that's pretty yeah that okay i need to devil check it the problem is black and white and black and white 2 are insanely expensive right now <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> so, yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah if they make a rom of it that you yeah. know, that's why haven't they made like a greatest hit or something like that or a Twitch that would be or not Twitch but a Switch store or something of it that would be nice. I'm sure like if 3DS games or something gets added to Switch uh, eShop, they might do that too because we're in, like mm -hmm. what Game Boy Advance we just started on, so they might put some Pokemon games on there. Yeah, that would be great if they ever decide to be to say yeah, okay, we'll do that. Or you know, Switch Remaster just don't make it like brilliant uh, Diamond uh, Shining Pearl because I don't like how they did that but you know they can give it a true remake that would be amazing really why didn't you like that it looked like it it was a good core experience i guess but it wasn't it was more like a hard port than a remaster it was oh. just a prettier port it, they just took everything from the ds and didn't update anything they just took the base game core and just moved it over and put a new coat of paint on it mm -hmm. so it was it was diamond and pearl yeah which i love those games but it wasn't the remaster that like Fire Red and Leaf Green were, Soul Silver Heart Gold were, or like uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Those were true remakes. Those were new games, uh, like reinvented how the original games were. Oh, so basically it was just like, oh, okay, they didn't really, they said, oh, this is a remake, but it really, uh, it's it was a, a remake, but really it was just like, hey, let's paint, let's paint, the, let's paint the colors a little bit brighter and then we'll call yeah. it a remake, but we haven't done anything else to the game. Like, it, like, again, visually, they're using 3D models, now they're doing all this stuff, so it is visually a new style, but, like, they kept the chibis for it, they didn't go full model, mm -hmm. they basically pulled everything from the core game, is exactly the same, there's no new Pokemon, everything's the same, basically, it's just, it visually looks like a more modern game, but they tried to keep it as much to the old style as they could, and I don't like that, versus, like, the other remakes where they fully brought them up to date like whatever current generation game was out when the remakes came out for an older generation they would match the specs of the current generation in its entirety yeah i kind of feel sad you know it's funny because like a, we we also i also do another podcast uh shameless plug uh, cfg gamecast uh that we like to do like we do a lot of discussions and then we've kind of gotten i've gotten again gotten, gotten into the discussion of pokemon itself in general that i feel that they've been kind of lazy when it comes to uh like for as important as the ip of pokemon is it's they you would think that they would treat it 
to the level of like you know Mario or you know Donkey Kong or like you know the big the big ones that they that they have because they usually treat their 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 big hitters like really really well like with Zelda and stuff but to me like I just feel like Pokemon the uh, Pokemon itself has been not only stagnant but it's it, the, uh, the the most previous ones have been fairly lazy uh, like they were recycling the old the old uh the old sprites in the original in, uh, in 8 and not like in the previous generation they didn't change much to it to what the handheld version was and then now this one was frame drops and I was just like why are they like treat this as a as like a off brand. This is a money maker for for, for Nintendo, you know. Uh, so I mean, sorry to get off my so, to get on the soapbox <laughs> on it, but like when I talk about these kind of discussions, with it, it's just like you know what you're paying seven sixty seventy dollars for a game like this. You know the value of the game is never going to go down in price, and uh, but it's like you would think that they would be they would be more innovative about what they're what they're doing for those things so, so you know so I, yeah yeah sorry sorry i didn't mean for you to, 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 to kind of get into it <laughs> oh you good you good <laughs> that's just the interviewer the the journalist thing in me there <laughs> there but uh no but i totally understand but that's that, that's really cool so <clears throat> man kevin thank you so much for uh for for geeking out with me I, uh, it was really fun talking to you man and uh just wanted to know uh is there could you if you'd like to plug in like where can folks like follow you or are you going to be doing uh, conventions or anything this is a time where you can uh can just uh you know advertise yourself out for the for this uh sure that uh, you can find me uh my twitter ad is kevin d Thelwell, where you can find me talking about shows i work on or help direct or you know just random things about my life uh you can uh yeah like we talked about before i would suggest that if you want to hear things uh, that i'm in and i guess hear me talk a lot you can watch uh girlfriend girlfriend because i play now yet in that to titular boyfriend of girlfriend girlfriend uh i played titular beast tamer and beast tamer rain and then i play titular ice blade sorcerer in the ice blade sorcerer shall rule the world which is like airing oh. like right now we're doing the dub for that so definitely check all those out because those are all really fun shows that i've got to work on especially girlfriend, not- girlfriend when we say stupid shit Stop. girlfriend girlfriend was like you know like another <laughs> show that i was like man this dude is straight play blade <laughs> but i have to say <laughs> oh you, yeah right am i wrong like that dude was I like mean, wow he's honest to a fault you want to see a playboy you watch ice blade sorcerer because what he does is criminal what he does is criminal you're like whoa this isn't allowed this man he has to be stopped no <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my god! Oh yeah, like like now yeah now yeah is just very now he's just really stupid and he's honest and people like him because he's earnest. But like Ray Ray and Ice Blade, he'll be like, "Well, I I've only known women my entire life, so therefore this is the only way I can talk to them. Let me get close to you to your face so I can really know how you feel." <laughs> like he's oh my god. He's, Madam, what, what, what do you mean your clothes are gone? It's fine. I've I've seen the woman's bosom all of my life. It's okay. I was gonna talk like that, but watch that show and you'll you'll understand. Like in the comments of every country of any of every episode, that is like, oh, the Riz Blade Sorcerer strikes again. <laughs> well, Kevin, you probably need to take like a shower every time you do an episode. <laughs> uh, it is. I mean, we we have a lot of fun in the booth with that one. Now he's the stupid one. Rain is the super nice one, and then Ray is the I don't know what's going on. He's a more criminal. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, is oh I, I used to ask uh, like uh uh is there like is there like a phrase or is there something that you've said before in in the booth that you just think like this is the most ridiculous sentence that I've ever seen or ever heard of uh like <laughs> like you would never uh, expect like do you have anything like that that you've experienced? Uh, there's a there's a couple of things i know like in in the show i worked on tribe nine where i played one of the characters santra he's one of the of the main team he mm-hmm. was kind of like a comic reliefy kind of character and they, he they gave him some really funny lines like during the booth of us recording in this booth the director's like hmm I want to try something here and change the line to where like he's it's a, it's a baseball anime like an extreme baseball anime. Mm-hmm. And there's a point where he's about to pitch to this girl, and the director wrote the line and had me go like, "Oh, you know," or oh, "Too bad I don't stick it in crazy, but you know you're out of here." And he, oh my god, you know, yeah, he's like, <laughs> he's like, "You're pretty cute, but I don't stick it in crazy." And I'm like, mm? and then I said the line, and then he, she he, she gets a home run, and then actually the girl is running through. She's, you know, and I'm like, oh no, that was my super fastball. How'd she hit it? And she's like, oh, you know, that's your fastball. And I want to see your quickies, bro. 
And I'm like, <laughs> are we That's playing so- baseball at this time? Oh, at that point? Like, it was baseball. It's extreme baseball. People died in that like, you know. That show's really good. Uh, girlfriend, girlfriend, I had to say a lot of stupid stuff. Like, you know, like uh, some of the really funny stuff I got to say was like, um, because like the writer for the main writer for that show was uh, was Maddie Morris, who also played one of the uh, the main girls in that show. And uh, the other one was was Brittany Lauder, who played one of the leads in that show. And, like every person who's in that show, like was really experienced, really phenomenal uh, actor and actress on there. And uh, Brittany would just ad lib so many meme lines in that one, like mommy milkers and stuff would get put into the script. Maddie was already writing really funny lines. And sometimes I would try to, uh, when I was like learning, like, oh, we can do this, we can mess with the script. Yeah, put me in on this, where like there will be like other lines where uh, my character's like shaking one of them. And I, Maddie recorded before me for, for one of the lines. And her character made such a funny reaction noise. I had to stop the direction, I'm like, hey, Peter, like, her sound is so good. I don't feel like the line here that I'm about to say <laughs> matches how ridiculous of a sound she's making. So can I try something? He's like, sure. And then like in the line, I had uh, now you say, oh, it must be agonizing being so down bad. And like the sound <laughs> that she made fit it perfectly. And it was the funniest thing or like where I add in like, like uh, there's like a scene where now you're like, uh, like fighting for this girl's uh, right to for freedom or something like that from her dad and stuff like that. And she's like a YouTuber, but she's like a uh, well, well, I don't even know what the word is for, for this influencer. Uh, or she's like an influencer, but like one one that uses her body to get views and stuff like that. Oh, so okay. like, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> there's like a scene where, where he's like trying to justify what she does online to her dad who wants to delete her channel. because like my daughter is doing what online, blah, blah, blah. And like. As long as listening, although you don't understand, like her editing, her videos, her dedication, her audience, blah blah blah. You don't understand. And then I changed the line and had the director like sign off on it. He goes, you understand? Your daughter, sir, is creating thirst traps on a pro level. <laughs> <laughs> this and, like, is girlfriend, girlfriend. Whole... Yes, this is all in girlfriend, girlfriend. Like, <laughs> oh my god, I I have never seen the most people. I've never knew that y'all actually ad-libbed or you were able to change the script like that that's freaking awesome oh yeah like if it fits it is like within the realms of what that character would say doesn't hurt the story in any way like there were a lot of lines that were just outright just you know change where like they're not saying anything like important right now the J just hey if it's funny and it doesn't break character it works (laughs) that is awesome oh my god that is freaking hilarious i did not know that that y'all were clinically insane (laughs) (laughs) it is so good that was really fun (laughs) kevin thank you so much man i I know i could talk to talk to you about all this stuff all day but (laughs) but (laughs) but thank you but uh folks if you like the interview i did with kevin d thelwell uh you could definitely listen to it on any podcast services out there as amongst all the other episodes that we have done uh, uh, on all podcasts as well as on our website confreaksandgeeks.com so Once again, this is Davis signing off. Y'all, take it easy.